Hi, I'm Paul Peterson, and welcome to Montville, Connecticut and the Montville Water Pollution Control Facility. Here at the town of Montville, they use sequencing batch reactors, or SBRs, to treat their wastewater. The influent flows have significantly higher loading than average due to industrial users from a paper plant and also a nearby casino. Due to those high loads, they need much more air than your average wastewater treatment plant. Today, we're going to speak with Superintendent Derek Albertson about why the Atlas Copco ZB VSD Plus was the perfect lower for his aeration application. So we're in front of one of your aeration basins, right? Which one is this? This is SBR uh, 6. Okay, and you have six total? We have six totals. Now and tell us a little bit about that process. Okay, this is a SBR, a se sequential batch reactor, and it's unique even in that it's not a typical SBR and then it has a five cycle system. Mm -hmm. It has constant flow or it's in the ickiest format. So you constantly have flow coming into the, the tank and then it runs through a certain amount of aeration and a certain amount of quiescence and settling. Then it's decanted off and that quality of decant water is what's delivered to our chlorine contact chamber before discharge to the Thames River. Yeah. Um, and we're able to not only um, get the air into the tank, but we have a measurable efficiency of 98% removal for the BOD. Which is just remarkable. You start out with four times stronger waste coming in and then you're you're far exceeding permit level on your discharge, correct? Right, we're only required to remove 85%, but we're as high as 99% um, in the, the highest loading months, which are in the summer. Yeah. Uh, we could not do that without adequate oxygen. But now in terms of treatment, obviously you've got really high quality nutrient removal. So it looks like between SBRs five and six here, we've got six in the aeration phase, and then what phase are we in over here? We're in the settle stage here, the quiescent part of the cycle. It allows the solids to settle out and then the decant process will follow that where we skim water up the top of the tank. Mm -hmm. There's one blower that serves both these tanks. Mm -hmm. So it's the blower runs continuously serving this tank and then revalving under automatic uh, SCADA conditions mm -hmm. to then serve this tank. And now we've got the aeration happening over here. Were you seeing similar patterns to this with the old blowers? You would see these surges with the old type of blowers. Mm -hmm. And with the new turbo blower, you see a more consistent bubble size and yeah. delivery. And when you're saying surges, you'd see sort of these humps or peaks in the tank. And that's going back to what you're saying about having too much air at certain periods of the process. And that basically means the air is not going into the water, it's coming all the way to the surface and out into the air, right? Right, it's, it's not really doing anything for you. You're wasting money because you're, you're just pumping air right through the tank. So you may be getting the same amount of CFM or SCFM into the tank, but because the oxygen's not dissolving in the water, it's not actually hitting the DO. So you're having to turn on another blower, use more energy to maintain the same DO with poor process control. When we had the old uh, delivery system, we would have a very inconsistent uh, feedback on our graphing system from SCADA. We would just see these giant humps of over-the-top DO uh, concentrations within the tank. And when you're seeing those big humps, those are big spikes in energy as well, correct? Big spikes in energy, it's just a waste of air. They were also confined to work within the space of an existing blower building. So it turned out that magnetic bearing high-speed turbo technology was a perfect fit. At 150 horsepower, it has a significantly smaller footprint than their existing 150 horsepower multi-state centrifugal blowers. On top of that, at the same amount of power, they're able to deliver significantly more airflow from a single blower of the turbo style than the multi-stage style. The fact that they're maglev, bearingless, there's uh, less friction. Yep. I think they're more efficient, uh, the rotor yep. moving and um, not touching the stator yep. and moving the air into the tanks. Yeah, and it's, it's something we were commenting on earlier when we're looking inside the machine and at the multi-stage next door, and both of them essentially have 150 horsepower motors, and that more efficient permanent magnet motor on these new turbo blowers is about 
half the size yes. physically. And then we look at the machines, even a nice enclosure integrated with the controls, it's substantially smaller of a piece of equipment in terms of footprint and size than the old multi-stages, which as I understand, similar horsepower, but not quite capable of outputting as much air for that horsepower, right? That's correct. I mean, I know when the riggers came in to deliver the equipment, one of the things they said was, is this it? <laughs> and uh, so it, the, the footprint is much smaller. So in addition to the, the energy savings and the, the dollars from the electrical grid, I understand that you've got some additional incentives as a result of these new turbo blowers as well. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of our requirements for effluent uh, quality is the removal of a nutrient. Yep. Um, our target nutrient is nitrogen. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to treat the water, the wastewater, with a significant amount of oxygen sufficient to bring up the ammonia to nitrate. Mm -hmm. um, that is done by adding a sufficient amount of air. Yep. And um, we do that very well now. So once it's up to that point, from the ammonia to the nitrate, we turn the air off, and then the organisms crack off the uh, oxygen yep. because they need it, and the uh, nitrogen is released to the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, that delivery of oxygen now that's so effective gets our organisms to do the work to get the ammonia to the nitrate very, very quickly. All of the ammonia is oxygenated, brought to nitrate, ready to when we turn the air off, so we're finding that um, our nitrogen removal is now 90% uh, efficient, mm -hmm. which is probably one of the best, if not the best in the state. The state actually has a credit program where those um, plants like ours that remove effectively nitrogen can sell their credits to other facilities that are not removing nitrogen effectively and we get a check for that, that's, and that's great. That's a great added bonus. You were reviewing your energy bills before the new ZB VSD Plus turbo blowers went in and after. What was it that you saw? But we set a record for May. As compared to last year, we were 16% lighter in energy demand, um, and that's kilowatt hours. Um, most of that energy savings is related to aeration. So we're gonna buy our third um, this capital improvement year and uh, can't wait to put it in. Can't wait to do the, the energy uh, calculations, the efficiencies, and, and brag about them. You gotta get the equipment, you have to do it. I would venture to say that about 50% of all plants are working on blowers that are not what they should be. Yeah. Um, you know, you can get better efficiency, more reliable for treatment, and these units sail on. Uh, you know, there's no more, not a lot of rubbing parts. They're not going to wear out. You're yep. going to get 20 years out of them. Yep. So we're, we're very fortunate. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having us here, Derek. Oh, I appreciate you. your time. Nice to see you. Yeah, good to see you.